Good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Irene Weiss, and I'm president of the League of Women Voters of Southeastern Connecticut. The League is a nonpartisan, inclusive organization whose goal is an informed electorate. We do not support candidates nor parties, but actively work for policies, especially those that provide citizen participation in voting. I just want to slip in a couple of recent activities so you know some of the kinds of things we've done. We just had a really great panel with Denise Merrill, the Secretary of State, and with Laura Smith, who's the lead state uh, vice president for voter services about, well, it was titled, How's Connecticut Do Compared to Georgia? And that's online and you can look at that anytime. And it was, it was really interesting. Um, the uh, Norwich Free Academy, along with the Robertstein Youth Group of the NAACP of Norwich and, and the League, um, put together a great forum on women in politics. And the, secret, the um, Lieutenant Governor Beisowitz was there, two state senators and two state reps and the head of um, an organization in Norwich. And I encourage you to watch that. I learned so many interesting things about these people that nobody ever knew because they talked about a lot of personal things. Um, and the last one was a terrific voter registration event at Grasso Tech. Um, the teachers, Susan Manning and Xiao Li, arranged for us to, to help the students online register to vote. But today, um, for today's debate, We've had a wonderful response, and I first want to thank the candidates, Andre Baumgartner and Mayor Keith Hedrick. Um, uh, thank you, Councillor Baumgartner and, and Mayor Hedrick for participating. And thank you also to the um, many people who sent in um, wonderful questions, thoughtful questions for the candidates. We've tried to include as many issues as we can based on the time that we have allowed. I wanna thank our timers, Jenny Bidding and Terry Roper of the League of Women Voters of Southeastern Connecticut. And a special thanks to our wonderful expert moderator, Jean Rabinow uh, of the Bridgeport Area League, who will explain the procedure and we'll begin the debate. Thank you, Jean, so much. Thank, thank you, you Irene. Um, the procedure is relatively simple on this one for everybody except the timers. Each candidate will be given 20 minutes in total to answer the questions that are asked. There is no limit on how long each answer can take. But when the 20 minutes are up, they're up. At the end of the 40 minutes, approximately, um, we will stop the questions and each candidate will be given a chance to give a closing statement of up to three minutes, and that will be the end of it. I will tell you that there, is, there are enough questions that I am reasonably positive we cannot possibly ask all of them, although they are all extremely good. I will also tell you that questions that can only be answered by one candidate will not be asked today. This is a debate in which we are encouraging the voters to contrast and compare the answers given by both candidates. And a question about why did you do X in the past is not something that both candidates can necessarily answer. Why will you do X in the future? That's legit. That being said, I would like to start the uh, first question and I will just give it randomly to Mr. Hedrick. And it's a softball to both of you. Why should the voters choose you? What is your background? What did you do in government? How many years did you do it? What kind of budgets did you manage and so forth? Uh, starting with Mr. Hedrick. Okay, thank you. First of all, I wanna say, Irene, thank you. Jean, thank you for doing this again. Ladies, thanks to the League of Women Voters for given me the opportunity to talk about the city of Groton and my background. So uh, just a little bit of my background. I did 23 years of submarine service in the United States Navy, followed by 16 and a half years in private industry. And then I've been involved in politics since around 2010. And I was the deputy mayor from uh, 2015 to 2017. I've been on the RTM. I've been the mayor since 2017, 
I've managed the budgets here. I've managed the budgets of about $90 million for the last four years. Most of that, uh, 70 million of that is in the um, uh, Groton Utilities and 20 million of that is for the city of Groton. We have nine departments, eight unions and 214 people. And uh, so that's my background and my experience and why I think that uh, I'm qualified to be the mayor and why I wanna to continue to be the mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Baumgartner. And please unmute yourself, sir. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, the League of Women Voters for hosting this uh, wonderful uh, debate. And thank you, uh, Mayor Hedrick, for participating. Um, for those who haven't met me uh, at your doorstep, my name is Andre Bumgardner, uh, and I'm absolutely honored to stand before you as the Democratic nominee uh, and uh, candidate uh, for mayor here in the city of Groton. Uh, voters have a very clear choice. Uh, new ideas or more of the same? Um, I look forward to discussing throughout uh, this debate um, our ideas to revitalize Thames Street, um, equipping families with the resources for distance learning, uh, and harnessing the power of renewable energy, as well as creating an open and inclusive government uh, here at City Hall uh, in Groton, and uh, fix our broken sewage tax. Uh, now to answer your question more directly, uh, voters deserved a mayor who understand the needs of our city, uh, can build coalitions between a cross section of our community, is equipped to manage a $20 million city budget and $70 million uh, utilities budget. As mayor, I'm very eager to work with our more than 200 city employees, uh, very dedicated city employees uh, who work on behalf of our city residents. Uh, my experience as state representative, uh, Groton Town Councilor, and Planning and Zoning Commissioner uh, as well as my work um, at the uh, state treasurer's office make me uniquely prepared for the role as mayor. Uh, first and foremost, I'm a lifelong uh, city resident. I grew up here and playing Little League uh, with the city police and at, you know, at Washington Park. As a child, I would swim at the, to the raft and collect uh, hermit crabs at, at Eastern Point Beach. And um, you know, I'm inspired each and every day uh, to give back to our community um, because it's my home. Um, as state representative, I served on, as a member of the Finance, Revenue, and Bonding Committee, Education Committee, and uh, Transportation Committee. Uh, in, the, in that capacity, I uh, worked diligently to restore uh, uh, very draconian ECS cuts um, to, um, for our school district, a very necessary skill for a, a, a town or city leader. Um, I've demonstrated uh, a willingness to work across party lines to support our local industry. Uh, and at the state treasurer's office, I've um, uh, worked with uh, colleagues that managed a $50 billion uh, pension and retirement fund. Um, as a member of the Groton Town Council, I've supported uh, balanced budgets uh, with a healthy fund balance, uh, which is why Moody's recently uh, voted to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Moody's recently upgraded our bond rating. Um, I've led the committee on in public safety uh, and march with uh, black, the Black Lives Matter movement here in our community, um, demanding equality for black and brown residents. I've been a staunch advocate for taking local action on climate change, uh, supporting coastal resiliency, uh, open space acquisition, and the toughest plastics reduction ordinance in the state. Uh, and finally, I serve on the Groton City Planning and Zoning Commission, where we work very closely with our small to large uh, employers to balance uh, the economic, uh, economic development and the unique needs of our coastal community. So as mayor, uh, I will bring these uh, rich experiences to the table um, with an open ear and inviting people of all walks of life in our city uh, to the decision-making table. I look forward to earning your vote on May 3rd and um, engaging in this debate. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question will go to Mr. Baumgartner first. Um, we had several of these. Um, what is your plan for taking care of the empty buildings and general lack of economic development on Thames Street? Well, well, that's a wonderful question. Um, as I mentioned, over the last uh, three and a half months, I've spoken to hundreds of residents at their doorstep. Um, and um, while walking along Groton Bank, uh, every other door, I have conversations with young families saying, 
what are we going to do with Thames Street? Thames Street was a motivating factor for us to purchase our home uh, here along the waterfront. And so um, I would like to focus on a few areas. For one, we need to improve uh, our um, permitting processes, cut the red tape. Uh, there is no reason why prospective developers or entrepreneurs have to uh, go to City Hall to pull a permit. Um, you should be able to do one-stop shopping online, go through uh, just a few simple processes uh, to um, uh, seek uh, building approvals here in our city. Um, so Thames Street will be a priority. We have to um, look at uh, various examples um, throughout our region. Um, you know, you look at New London, you look at Mystic in the last few years, they've really supported a bustling restaurant scene. Um, in New London, for example, they've turned a office warehouse into a successful restaurant in uh, The Social. Um, in uh, Mystic, they're uh, retrofitting a um, historic buildings uh, to build breweries. Um, where is the foresight and vision here in the city? Uh, Thames Street, the conditions on Thames Street have remained largely the same throughout my entire lifetime. Um, so we need to improve walkability and bikeability. There are many um, sidewalks uh, that are not ADA compliant uh, because there is a utility pole uh, right in the middle of it. Um, so if we want to encourage more foot traffic, again, we have to address some of those concerns. Uh, recently, the, bond, um, uh, the governor approved funds uh, at the Bond Commission for uh, eight uh, boat slips. And um, that really, I think, can be a catalyst for development. Um, there are uh, nearby buildings that are greatly underutilized, want to engage, uh, again, entrepreneurs to uh, work with uh, uh, existing property owners uh, to, again, activate our waterfront. Uh, so improving walkability, uh, improving permitting processes, uh, and activating our waterfront would like to establish a, a river walk as well. Um, and have been uh, a part of those discussions as a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, all right, uh, same question, Mr. Hedrick. Thank you. So <clears throat> I agree with Town Councilor Bumgarner in that streamlining processes, and we've done that. When I got here, we started streamlining processes so that it wouldn't take as long in order to get permits. We are now going online with those permitting processes and we're going to point of sale. In addition to that, the river walk, that is something that is being done through the Economic Development Commission that's already on progress. The, as far as Thames Street specifically goes, because this ties to economic, and economic development in general, but I just, re just received information that from a small harbor improvement programs, uh, projects program, we're gonna get $649,000 to reconstruct the docks that are down on the waterfront. There'll be eight 26 foot boat, boat slips and a handicap accessible kayak boat launch. In addition to the $75,000 grant that we're gonna to get to study how to improve the waterfront down there at Thamesview Park. So we have high, we are looking at high density development across from Garbo's Lobster. The restaurant that is there, I am working with a restaurateur out of Mystic to develop a restaurant there. There are one of the challenges that I've talked to people that Thames Street has looked kind of like it has for 20, 30 years now. There have been a lot of mayors that have uh, worked on this. But one of the things that we have, one of the challenges that we have down there is there's one property owner that owns 14 properties. So I have been working with him and we are uh, also applying pressure from the police side through, uh, through blight and from the planning side in order to get that individual to move some of those properties and to put storefronts on the first floor with residential on the top floors. So the, one of the things we're looking at is the sportsman to try to get a bar down there, the Army Navy store to try to get uh, an, a, either a restaurant or a bar there and the old burned down Ken's Tackle. Uh, we attacked that as blight, but we were unable to, we were not successful because an architect and a judge ruled that that was uh, structurally stable. So we didn't get to do that. But we're looking to develop residential units in the business fronts. We're also businesses for residents and for visitors. We have to address the parking issues that are down on Thames Street. And one of the things that we're gonna do after the election is we're gonna develop a community group that's gonna work with Sierra Patrick and the Economic Development Commission to help revitalize Thames Street, Strange Street through local action. And these are the kinds of things that we are now doing on Thames Street. Thank you. 
next question will go back um, to Mr. Hedrick first. Um, and it's a follow up on economic development, but this time it's about Five Corners. Um, what is your position about the Five Corners development and what do you say to those who have been against the proposal? Well, <clears throat> thank you. The, the, the issue is economic development. Do we want economic development in a city or not, or not? And then where do you have economic development? One of the challenges that some people have with this is they don't like the height of the building, which is proposed at five, five stories. Some of them don't like the facade of the building, which appears to be too modernistic for some people. But currently, that is all in front of the Planning and Zoning Commission. And frankly, that's out of my hands as the mayor. But when I ask people, because they say, well, you're going to disrupt some residential, residential houses. And the, the challenge that we have in the city of Grime is we don't have a lot of open space and we already, we are built out with residential units. So where would you like to put a five story building that might disrupt some of the residents? Would you wanna put it at Eastern Point Beach? Probably not. Would you wanna put it across from uh, the golf course? Probably not. Do you wanna put it down in the middle of Thames Street? Probably not there either. And no one wants to tear down 200 year old houses on a historic grind bank to put them. So if we put this here, which is going to help electric boat with the numbers of people that they need, because this is we're targeting toward the engineers and the people that are going to work at electric boat, this is literally a baseball throw from electric boat property. So we need to decide what is the right thing to do and how can we do it and have economic development uh, as a forethought in the center of ground or in the city of ground. Now, so we can. So that's it. I'll just let it go with that. Thank you. Okay, same question to Mr. Baumgartner. Uh, thank you, Jean. Well, as a uh, city planning and zoning commissioner, um, I am not permitted at this time to opine on any open application. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, there is an application before us to uh, deliberate on the proposed uh, five-story uh, building at uh, Five Corners. I will say that while I support um, mixed use development, um, we do have to be uh, cognizant and mindful of uh, maintaining the community character. Um, so uh, as mayor, when we are looking at any development project in the city, uh, that will be first and foremost. There is no reason why our city cannot host charrettes uh, with, um, the, uh, with neighbors that will be impacted uh, by any form of development to solicit their input on uh, what kind of development they would like to see in their community. There is no reason why neighbors should have to see any proposed plan for any project at the Planning and Zoning Commission when the city has had uh, the opportunity uh, to provide um, um, not just information, but solicit their input um, previously. So uh, we will do that uh, as, as your mayor. Uh, we will host charrettes um, and um, uh, meetings about uh, developing master plans for Five Corners. There, uh, as of now, there is not a master plan for uh, the Five Corners area. Another area, the mayor uh, mentioned parking that we are built out. I will mention that uh, also in my lifetime, uh, Electric Boat has uh, expanded uh, its uh, parking uh, to meet its uh, significant parking needs that will only uh, become, um, um, which will only uh, become uh, more and more in, in the uh, years to come. Uh, so I would like to uh, work with not just Electric Boat, but also um, the state and the federal, our federal delegation to develop a shared parking strategy to address uh, some of the needs that the parking needs that we will be seeing at Electric Boat. Therefore, uh, there will not be a need to uh, gobble up homes in that uh, surrounding Five Corners neighborhood. Um, it is incumbent on our city to uh, prioritize multimodal transportation. I currently serve on the seat board. Uh, would like to see more folks utilize our bus lines, more folks uh, to. Um, uh, building infrastructure so that more folks walk to work, uh, supporting bikeability, bike lanes, so that um, our young engineers and um, you know our, our welders can uh, bike uh, to an uh, electric boat from their home. So uh, these are things that I would like to address, um, and very much uh, will be um, uh, in again very much uh, connected to uh, the development in, of Five Corners for the years to come. Okay, thank you. Next question will go to Mr. Bumgartner first. And it is, what services does Groton Utilities Company provide to the city? And if elected, 
would you support maintaining the relationship or switching to Eversource? Absolutely. So um, to answer the uh, latter part of your question, I, I am firmly opposed to any form of privatization of Groton Utilities, uh, oppose the consolidation of the town and the city. Um, I have been uh, very outspoken uh, throughout my time here in politics on that matter uh, and in local uh, public service on that matter. Um, and most recently, um, during uh, the primary, I was endorsed by the Groton Utilities uh, workforce, uh, the um, locals uh, 007 and 818, which represent the line workers and the supervisors at uh, Groton Utilities. Cumulatively, uh, they represent uh, the largest uh, workforce in our city. Uh, these men and women are on the front lines, uh, keeping the lights on uh, during hurricanes and blizzards. Uh, we are for so fortunate to have them as frontline workers. Um, in their endorsement, they cited uh, my innovative approach to um, to investing in uh, resiliency, resisting, re investing in the re reliability of our um, electric uh, grid, um, focusing on um, uh, the investment of uh, solar panels, um, developing a robust solar program so that our ratepayers can um, install solar, uh, uh, our commercial and residential ratepayers can install solar panels on their um, rooftops. Uh, so these are innovative approaches that will result in a reduction in uh, utility bills. Um, additionally, we manage uh, the water division. We, um, our reservoir is in uh, the uh, town of Groton, uh, and actually 20% uh, of the town's open space uh, is held by uh, Groton Utilities. Uh, would like to in, uh, investigate opportunities for expansion, um, supporting our surrounding municipalities. Um, um, again, uh, the Groton Utilities is our way to uh, support uh, regionalization um, and to ensure that our surrounding municipalities uh, also um, can have access to clean uh, water just as the city does. Uh, it could represent an, an, a, a wonderful opportunity for our city uh, financially for the years to come. Uh, and lastly, uh, as of a couple years ago, the city now manages uh, the sewer division. It used to be a part of the city government budget. Uh, the mayor cites uh, quite frequently that he has held the line on taxes, has not reduced taxes. Well, that's because he shifted uh, the city a sewer budget to the, um, the, the sewer budget from the city uh, to the utilities budget. Uh, thus um, doubling uh, the water bill uh, for many ratepayers in our city. So I would like to take a look at that um, to ensure that our families are not burdened uh, with additional um, uh, water bill, uh, in additional increases in their water bill for the years to come. Um, so again, cannot wait to roll up my sleeves to work with the hardworking men and women of the electric, uh, water and sewer division uh, here in our city. Okay, same question to uh, Mr. Hedrick. Uh, right. Would you support maintaining the relationship or switching to Eversource? Thank you, Gene. So just real quick, I want to step back to the last question where uh, Town Councilor Bumgarner talked about seat and JLS and the parking plan. We're currently working with the Southeastern Connecticut Council of Governments for a JLS study for a parking management plan in the city of Groton. We're actively uh, working with the COG and with the electric boat to determine this. There is no discussion of tearing anything down to put parking and knock parking down. We are discussing if we can use tiered structures such as a parking garage. We're also looking at bringing people in from outside. Currently, uh, since he knows that he's on the seat council, he knows that the bus, bus lines and the times here don't always co coincide with when the people are coming to work, especially for the 6.30 to 2.30 shift. So that's a challenge and that has not been corrected at that level, but it could be. So the parking plan we have and those kind of things. So as far as Groton Utilities goes, I 100% maintaining Groton Utilities. If you look at where we are right now in electric rates, we are 20% or more less than Eversource. So we are going to continue that. We, our water, we just did a $42 million water uh, facility that is so advanced that it will meet water quality standards that don't even exist yet. So we are the region's water supplier. We go up to Ledger, into Ledger, up to Preston. We are going across the Pocatonic uh, Cove in order to go into Montville. We, we have cross connects that we can help other uh, 
other utilities and other uh, municipalities if they need water. And we do that. The, uh, some of the programs that Town Councilor Bumgarner wants to do in with the solar and, and a lot of the green issues he has will absolutely raise rates. And if, we, if, you, if you incorporate all those, those rates will go up more than 20%. So you will be paying the same rates as what you pay now, whatever source pays now. Now we have resiliency already. We have an aggressive tree cutting program in order to keep the trees uh, from knocking the power lines down. We are, we are investing in infrastructure on electric and water, and now we're investing in sewer. So let me talk about sewer. If you look at the taxes in the city of Groton, the taxes went from 5.77 in 2017 to 4.3 now. They were flat last year and they're flat this year. If you look at, and that's in the city of Groton. If you go to the town of Groton, Town Councilor Bumgarner raised taxes the last two years. If you, and it's a record, you can go look it up and see what the taxes did in the town. So one of the things that we did was we removed the sewer. I removed the sewer out of the, out of the tax base. Why did we do that? Because it was underfunded and the can was getting kicked down the road. We had a $500,000 digester claim when we had the explosion there. We implemented previously discussed plans for funding based on a cost of service study and an internal study. It is now in an enterprise account and all the sewer money has to be used for sewer. When it was in the tax base, the money could be taken out of that and be used for other things. That money is now protected. It is in a lockbox. Also, all users, including state, town and city properties and nonprofits now pay for the usage of the sewer infrastructure. So everybody is paying to maintain the sewer infrastructure. You now pay for what you use and not based on what the value of your house is. And this approach was approved by the residents at a Freeman's meeting. And this is a fiscally responsible uh, method to lower your taxes and avoid tax increases due to surprise capital costs. And in the, while I was doing some research for this, I found out that the town has a sewer tax. And, the, and so they have your tax, which is your, your main tax, and then they throw an additional tax on top of that, which is a 0.56 mill rate on the town. And then if you were to if you were to uh, if you were to to uh, take that tax rate and put it on the city of Grotens, and and you were to take the, the based on population, that would be a 2.24 mill increase. And I will also say that now that the sewer is out of the tax tax base. If there's any of looking at putting it back into the tax base, that will raise your taxes two mills, which is 50%. And if you're if you want to have your taxes raised, and then follow the recommendations that Town Councilor Bumgarner wants to do, because the the plans and procedures and policies that we put in place lower your taxes, lower your rates, and will continue to do so into the future. Thank you, Gene. Okay. Uh, thank you both on that. Um, the next question is a little bit different and it will go to Mr. Hedrick first. The city of Groton has several unions represented by several different bargaining representatives. What do you believe will be the challenges you would face with these representatives and unions in budgets and other goals that you have for your administration in the coming years? Okay. Thank you, Jean. Uh, we have eight different bargaining units and the challenges are the, the different contracts. And they have different contracts. Uh, all the contracts are different. We've tried to standardize the contracts as best we can, but that's always a challenge. Uh, we just finished going through contracts and the challenge is how do you take care of the employees and at the same time, take care of the taxpayers? So you have to evaluate how much, so the employees are gonna want increased raises. Understand that. They're gonna want something different for their pension. We're, I'm not gonna get into the current negotiations that we have, but pensions are always an issue. Insurances are always an issue. But one of the things that, that we are looking at 
also is how do you protect the taxpayers, right? So it's taking care of the re it's taking care of the employees, and at the same time taking care of the taxpayers so that uh, your taxes can be lower lowered, and there's a long term cost savings. In the position that I'm in now, we're looking at things that are going to impact tax rates three, five, and ten years down the road. You, you are never looking at one year down the road, or, or at least this mayor doesn't look one year down the road. There are a lot of people that do that. So what happens, what you also need to do is during, not just during negotiations, but on a daily basis, management and union both have to follow the contracts. And when they follow the contracts, then everybody get, everybody is okay. It's when you start treating different employees differently under the same contract that we get into trouble. And that's why it's important. And that's why I'm involved with all the departments because I wanna make sure that we're taking care of the employees and that they're being treated fairly. And that's it, thank you. Same question on union negotiations to Mr. Baumgartner. Uh, absolutely. So as I stated before, I was endorsed by uh, AFSCME uh, uh, Council for uh, Locals 007 and 818, representing the line workers and supervisors. Uh, they have been working without a contract for the last two years. So again, when the mayor says he has been working on doing something, uh, the record, his record speaks for itself. Uh, he has simply not delivered uh, on a contract uh, when he has had ample opportunity to uh, negotiate with them. Uh, secondly, um, uh, many of the uh, unions I have worked, uh, I've spoken with, I should say, um, have stated that uh, the pandemic pr um, created a host of new complications for uh, city employees. Um, they feel as if management has not taken uh, the issue of the pandemic um, seriously at, at times. Um, uh, case in point, uh, it, the uh, 007 union had to take it upon themselves to devise and fight for a uh, COVID staffing response plan. Um, many, uh, many, uh, um, many of our um, employees who are uh, non-union uh, and management uh, were able to work from home when our essential frontline workers did not have that choice. Um, many um, employees had to uh, be vaccinated um, uh, on their own time and not during um, city hours. I think that is, um, we, we uh, our city, our, our frontline workers here in our city deserve much more respect from their mayor. I will work with our mayor. We've heard a lot about uh, supervisory experience and management experience. We work with our employees. We don't manage them. We have department hands to manage and that we manage as mayor, but we do not directly manage our employees. We work with them. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you both. At this point, um, can I ask the timers uh, to give the times remaining for both candidates, please? Uh, Keith has six minutes and 48 seconds. Okay. And Andre has six minutes and 33 seconds. Thank you very much. All right. Um, the next question is going to go to Mr. Baumgartner first. And it is, should the city of Broughton add additional recreational programming for adults? Why or why not? And how would such activities be funded? Absolutely. So uh, while going door to door, I've heard so many residents um, share their love for our beaches, our parks, uh, uh, both uh, young and uh, older, some of our elderly. Um, but what I've heard time and time again is that uh, they would like to see an expansion of our uh, recreational services. Um, I would like to leverage uh, funds that will be coming from the town of Groton uh, through uh, American Rescue Plan funds that will be appropriated uh, to our town from uh, the state uh, to ensure that families, um, particularly our, our youngsters, have access to expanded after school programs and enhanced summer camp. Um, we can utilize these dollars, make, make our case to the town um, for these funds to um, offer nutrition programs, recreational athletic programs, homework supports and tutoring opportunities uh, at the new Thames River Elementary School, which will be built at the side of the Westside Middle School. 
Here in our city, we don't have a youth services uh, bureau. Um, the town of Groton operates its youth services uh, department as well as human services. Um, so it is incumbent on our city. We have a very high needs population. Uh, inequality has only gotten worse during this pandemic. Uh, our families in, in many areas in our community have been so hit so hard um, uh, during this pandemic and losing their job. Uh, and some families uh, don't even have the childcare available uh, for their youngsters while they have to work in some cases two or three jobs. Um, so it is incumbent on our city uh, to develop a plan to offer uh, recreational opportunities to our youngsters, also uh, to our, um, our older folks as well, um, you know, uh, in terms of the beach, um, utilizing the Zabirsky House and the Tyler House in the years to come. Um, all um, floors of, of those spaces, in, in my eye, they are uh, heavily uh, underutilized as is. Um, so uh, recreation, expanding recreation will be a major focus of mine uh, during um, um, my mayoralty. All right, thank you. Same question to Mr. Hedrick. Thank you, ma'am. First of all, I wanna go back real quick on the contract, on the 818 contract, that's the one that you're referencing about for two years. 818 did not engage for a full year. We tried to get them to come to the table and they refused. And then once they came to the table, they delayed. And that was what took us so long. And when they, when they were supposed to vote on it to take it for ratification, it did not go to membership. So that's the details and the, and the truth behind what happened on 818. The 007, the staffing plan, we had a plan and a protocol and procedures and policies in place and the union didn't like it. They wanted the NPU deal. What NPU did was NPU said, we're gonna pay you to stay home and we'll pay you double time if you come in for an outage. What management had, and then I got called in to help with this, is that it was a week on and a week off in the, in the very beginning so that we made sure that we had to safe groups in and come in. and as far as being able to do the work, we the, the executive order said, work from home if you can, work, uh, do flexible hours, those kind of things. We did that. It, and I told the electricians, if you can show me how you can repair a cable line from your couch, I'll let you work from home. They were essential personnel and they cannot do electrical repairs from their home. So they had to come in. We put the protocols in place, no one, from the city of Groton or from Groton Utilities got COVID as a result of any of the workplace work that they did. None of the residents did. We gave people uh, vaccinations. Everybody that wanted two vaccinations are fully vaccinated and we still have protocols in place. Now going back to recreational programs, we have a lot of recreational programs already. We did a lot of extra things this year that were COVID friendly. We did trivia at the beach. We did the trails. Uh, we did uh, scarecrows. We did, did the Easter egg extravaganza for a drive-through. We do a lot of this. Now, part of this is awareness. I have seniors here that don't know that they can go to the senior center. We've been working on awareness for the last four years. We're doing that. The American Rescue Funds, those go to the town. I verified that with Martin Hepp with the Office of uh, OPM, Office of Personnel Management. And there, I've talked to John Burt. And Councilor Bumgarner was on a, on a video call that this happened and said, there is no carve out for the city of Groton. And as far as funds for the kids, there's the electric, um, excuse me, the education, education is gonna get more funds than, uh, than the town. So food programs, we have in the last several months, we have given several thousand, 3000 boxes of food to, local, to the local populations here. And we have a relationship with the Jim and Moran uh, United Way Food Center so that we have, pot, we have relationships through St. John's Christian Church and Brantford Manor to ensure that people are getting food and we're working with them on recreational programs. Thank you. Thank you both on that one. Uh, this one will go to Mr. Hedrick first. Um, and we got several questions about consolidation of services. Uh, in these difficult times when residents are using food banks, can we still justify having separate government for the city and town? For example, do we need separate recreation departments? Do we need separate town halls? What are the advantages and disadvantages of consolidating? 
Okay. Thank you, Jim. So I have gone on the record 100% since I started campaigning back in 2017. I am 100% against consolidation of the city and the town. We are working, I work with John Burke, my department heads work with, their, with his department heads to look for collaborative efforts and things that we can do that are gonna save money and that we can help each other out. We do that. But if you, if you look at uh, where things are, what happens is uh, the citizens in the city of Groton lose services. And I am 100% against that. Because there's already an effort out there to consolidate the police and get rid of the police. And that would lose services to the city. And we pay extra for those services that we have. And the services, the recreation services that the town provides, we provide our city people can go to the town town rec, rec, town people can go to city rec, they can go to New London rec. So the services that we provide here in the city are not duplicative services, because those services are not provided in other places. For example, my planning, we have our own planning, our own economic development. And so, because the town was not providing that and that's why we have it. So I will finish up with that. Thank you. All right, the same question to Mr. Baumgartner. Yes, uh, as I stated earlier, I uh, am firmly opposed to, pri uh, to privatization of our city services and the consolidation of our town and city. Uh, with that said, uh, it is incumbent on our mayor to develop relationships with uh, not just our uh, town leaders, but also our surrounding municipalities, given that we are a regional utility provider. I will leverage the experiences I have uh, forming relationships as state representative and town councilor, uh, working with our uh, surrounding elected officials um, to um, work on areas of uh, existing synergies to promoting tourism, uh, promoting uh, economic, regional economic development uh, projects. Uh, obviously, Electric Boat is located uh, within our city limits. Um, it is incumbent on our city to develop relationships with our federal delegation. Uh, I was recently endorsed by both Congressman Joe Courtney and Senator Chris Murphy, who have been on the front lines bringing uh, home those contracts um, to uh, the city. Um, the South Yard Assembly Building represents an $850 million building project. Uh, we will have uh, thousands of additional workers working within our city, and it's so important that our mayor um, prioritizes uh, developing housing, uh, developing developing um, uh, businesses, so uh, supporting uh, entrepreneurs that will uh, establish businesses here in our city uh, so that our uh, workforce have a place to go. Um, so again, uh, it is important that um, whoever the mayor is, that they do uh, have the ability to work with our regional partners moving forward. And as your mayor, I have not only demonstrated a capacity to do so, but will continue doing so in the future. All right, um, the next question is on taxes um, and it will go to Mr. Baumgartner first. Both the mayor and the town and the councilor, town council are responsible for voting on budgets. Will your proposed campaign initiatives, if enacted, increase, decrease, or keep taxes the same in the city? And given the electric boat expansion, would you be able to promise the voters that there will not be a property tax increase in the coming term? Absolutely. Now the mayor um, uh, started discussing taxes um, uh, at, uh, earlier, uh, stating that I voted to raise taxes. What I find most interesting is that I voted to appropriate additional funds for uh, police and highway operations during my time as a town councilor have always voted to support uh, the city, uh, the mayor's uh, budget request. Um, and so the lion's share of the town's um, uh, uh, revenue, uh, I'm sorry, the city's revenue comes directly from the town and grant utilities. Um, about a third comes directly from direct property taxation or direct property tax levy. Um, and so um, when the mayor states I voted to raise taxes, well, my question is, do you support uh, my, our, the, the town's appropriation to the city uh, so that you, uh, uh, our city uh, can continue to maintain strong and robust services? Um, so I will always support our city. Um, again, uh, the town recently received an increase in their bond rating uh, from Moody's and they cited our um, fiscal prudence. 
Uh, and so uh, we will bring that uh, same level of prudence to the city and again, uh, work with our town in a collaborative fashion to ensure that um, we receive our fair share of funds. Okay, and Mr. Hedrick? Thank you, Gene. So <clears throat> my policies are gonna keep taxes level and flat. We have those in place. There, th I am looking three and five years out down the road and we are evaluating expenses versus revenues. So uh, Town Councilor Bumgarner is correct in that roads and highways, but by the state act, the special act that created the city of Groton, the town is required to provide those monies that are necessary and proper for the repairing and making of roads that are town roads in the city of Groton. So you have to do that or you'll go to arbitration and then we get the attorneys involved. We don't wanna do that. The police, by tradition, 50% of my police salary, the correction, police budget minus my chief salary has been funded. The city of Groton, District 2 and District 3, primarily due to Pfizer and Electric Boat, pays 30, over 37% of the tax base to the town of Groton. In return, we ask for three to 4%. That's all we return. My point was, in the city of Groton, we were able to lower taxes and maintain them flat last year and this year. Nobody else in the state of Connecticut has been able to do that. The town has raised taxes the last two years. That's a fact, go look it up. And, and so we are going to continue to do what we're doing. We are fiscally responsible and, we are, and, and we've, we've maintained services. We kept, uh, uh, we kept police, fire, sanitation, all those services, and we kept them level. So that's it, thank you. All right, can I have a time check please again for both candidates? Mr. Hedrick has 18 seconds left. <laughs> all right. Andre has one minute and 23 seconds. Oh dear, all right. Um, this next question, um, is going to go to Mr. Hedrick first, and obviously you have a very limited amount of time to answer it, um, and then to Mr. Baumgartner, and then after that we will do closing statements. Um, the question is, um, how do you plan to balance economic development and still preserve open space in the city? Thank you. Real quick, you can still have economic development and you can still have open space, if you start to, uh, for example, Colonel Ledger, I'm for the development of Colonel Ledger. Town Councilor Bumgarner voted against it at the town level because he said trees are going to be destroyed. But Mr. Belloc, the developer, said no, that there's no trees going to be destroyed and you can do economic development. I'm and sorry. That's still it. save. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The same question to Mr. Bumgarner economic development versus open space. Absolutely. So uh, throughout my time uh, in public service, I've always balanced uh, the unique needs of uh, expanding uh, and acquiring open space with um, ensuring that uh, our city prioritizes economic development and expansion. So um, I voted recently to support our data center, um, which will be a represent an enormous opportunity for our city, uh, particularly Groton Utilities, to grow um, our uh, electric revenue. Uh, additionally, the town is set to gain uh, a windfall of revenue um, as a result of the deal. And uh, as a member of the town council, you know, we, I've, our council has supported um, investing in open space, and I'll do that as our city mayor. Uh, as chair of the Public Utilities Commission, um, we will ensure that Groton Utilities focuses on um, open space acquisition, um, buff, creating buffers around our watershed. Um, it's so critically important. We also work with our surrounding um, uh, conservation groups, um, you know, GOSA, uh, Avalonia Land Trust, um, I have, a, again, track record of doing so, and um, I will uh, yield the floor. Thank you. I believe we are now essentially out of time for both candidates. I want to thank the candidates for their answers so far, and I want to thank the people who submitted the 23 questions we never got to. They were good. 
and I wish we had more time. At this point, however, we go to the candidate's closing statements, three minutes each, and by luck of the draw, it will start with Mr. Baumgartner. Well, again, uh, thank you, Jean, for the opportunity to participate in this discussion. Again, thank you, Mayor Hedrick, for also uh, participating. Uh, over the past three and a half months, I've gone on a citywide listening tour, um, personally knocking on thousands of doors and speaking with hundreds of voters uh, or in residents at their doorstep about how their families have coped uh, with the pain this pandemic has caused. Um, you cannot serve as mayor of the city uh, without taking the time to level with your constituents. Leaders are listeners. Uh, as state representative, I regularly hosted town hall meetings, uh, community forums, and office hours to hear the everyday concerns of residents, and I will continue that tradition as mayor. Our short and long-term pandemic response is paramount, uh, of paramount importance. And coordinating with the uh, Legislate Health District for effective vaccine rollout will be uh, the top of the agenda for day one. Um, again, we need to shore up our support for our young families whose children are in distance learning and ensure uh, that they have the resources they need to succeed. We do that by closing the digital divide, by enhancing recreational opportunities, supporting wraparound services for our youth, getting them off the streets and getting them into, uh, again, these wonderful recreational opportunities we will offer uh, in the years to come. A city government that works for the people must operate transparently. I will set up an open data portal where residents uh, can access important financial information. Uh, additionally, I'd like to launch a, um, a service where residents can um, request, um, uh, request uh, uh, support from their municipality uh, that can, so that they can communicate uh, with the city and grant utilities about non-emergency issues like fixing a pothole. Um, so I am uh, ready to roll up my sleeves to get to work on behalf of all of our residents. Uh, this has been a historic election. We uh, won the Democratic primary in a dramatic fashion uh, and very much look forward to making our case within the next week uh, to all city residents as to why uh, we ought to support progressive and prudent leadership. Uh, again, there are two stark choices, energetic, uh, renewed leadership, a commitment to all residents here in our city or more of the same. Voters deserve to have representation that serve their needs not the needs of the select few as have been done in the past. Unfortunately, uh, the city has been uh, entrenched in uh, many scandals in the past. Uh, case in point, you look at the uh, Kentucky Derby trips that were taken by uh, many um, uh, of our uh, um, city management uh, and our uh, utilities commissioners. Um, we need to uh, promote accountability, oversight, and transparency. You will have an honest leader uh, in, uh, in me, in our team, Please vote row A, Monday, May 3rd, Andre Bumgarner. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you on election day. Thank you. Closing statement, Mr. Hedrick. Thank you. I agree that there is a stark difference between the two candidates, stark differences between the two candidates. I think experience matters. I think the fact that for the last four years, we have either lowered or maintained taxes, and we have uh, maintain services. I think that's important. I have a proven, a proven track record of what we can do here. Economic development is on the forefront. We have already started with economic development. One of the things that I did in the last couple of years is I made the economic development specialist full time. That's how devoted I am to economic development. We have diversity on my council. We have diversity in the police force. We have the most diversity in the region with the, with the uh, police force. And based on policies that I implemented back in 2017, we have an increase of 5% ethnic diversity through our hiring practices and the way that we go about engaging personnel. We are looking at maintaining police. I'm not looking at reducing police. I'm not looking at putting a police civilian oversight committee with subpoena power, which is what has been recommended uh, by Town Councilor Bumgarner in the past. We have a police and community together committee, which works together to bridge the gap between the police and the residents in the city. We're embracing resiliency. We have, we're currently in the middle of a study that is gonna help us come up with plans and recommendations 
on what we need to do and the procedures and policies that we need to change. We are embracing bike walkability and bikeability in the city of Groton as part of our economic strategy and our planning. Many of the things that my opponent wants, we're already doing. So when he talks about we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, we're just gonna continue what we're doing and we're gonna get there. We have maintained the citizens and the employees safe during COVID. And when it comes to vaccines, we had, COVID, we had COVID testing, but we also rolled out COVID vaccines based on the relationship that I had with Ledge Life Health District. And just recently, last week specifically, we brought vaccines to the vulnerable populations of Branford Manor. We're the first ones in this area to do that. We're going to continue to do that and take care of our populations. And if you have a pothole problem, call 860-446-4000 and they will take care of it for you. We already have customer service and we have a way to take care of things. So we will continue to be fiscally prudent. We will continue to be responsible and we will continue to stay focused on the city of Groton residents. Thank you. Don't forget to vote on May 3rd. And if you wanna vote for me, it's 1C, color in the oval, and write in my name, Keith Hedrick, K-E-I-T-H-H-E-D-R-I-C-K. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to both candidates. Irene? Yes, thank you to all of you. Um, to both candidates and the team, it's a really a lively and informative um, discussion. Um, local elections are much more important than most people realize. So we encourage voters to participate in the Grattan City election next Monday, 6 a.m. to 8. Um, your polling places are the Zabirsky House and the Municipal Building. And if you value learning about um, and providing policy information and political information to the public, we hope you'll consider joining the league. Um, thank you again, everybody, and um, don't forget to vote. And I know these candidates are uh, open to you calling them and asking for more information if that's something you'd like to do. So thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you and be safe. Thanks.